from 41 Seaver Way. Welcome to the home of the New York Mets. This is City Field. Interleague Baseball on MLB The Show. It's the Houston Astros going up against the New York Mets. Alongside Chris Singleton, I'm John Chomby. Patrick Mazika has gotten the call to the show and is in the lineup for this one. Singy, they've already turned to their system earlier in the season, and now they've done it again. And you have to think they're hoping he can inject some energy into this offense, Boog. I mean, they're shooting for a big year, and they must believe he can be a part of that. That's why they called him up. And it's not often that you see a team get multiple from the minors. And, and next to hit for Houston, Chaz McCormick. So RBI spot, but Chris, this is a guy that is not really swinging the bat all that well here. In this situation, you have a real good opportunity to get swings and misses and record a strikeout. I think you attack him in this spot. Here, we go now. Here comes go. a pitch. To second, pulls him off the bag. Next offering upstairs. Gary Simmons has to play duty in this one. Well, with Simmons, it's not always your standard strike zone, Boog. It kind of gives a little extra in some parts of the zone and then can be tighter in others. But I think the important thing is he doesn't get labeled as inconsistent. So you got to stay ready up there. Let's see if he gives him anything to hit here. It's a good changeup to hit up in the zone. I don't think he recognized it. I'm sure he'd love to have that one back. Righty delivers. Fouls one away and now three and two. Definitely got the hitter conscious of the pitch inside. Really think the outer half is open. Back to work. Three two now. Swing and a ball lifted left field. Canna drifts towards it. He scores on the sack fly, and it's 1-0. Well, that's a quality at bat. And here's the catcher, Patrick Mazika. Batting gun. The catcher. Patrick. Odorizzi back to work. And he takes a strike. Ball one there. Next pitch inside. And it's two and one. Well, he's so great about hitting the ball the other way. He gets those arms extended. So right there, just trying to straighten him up a little bit so he doesn't have as much outside plate coverage. Left-hand hitter waits. Right through there for a strike. That one pushed foul. One down, base is empty. Swing and a miss, and he struck him out. Two away. Well, that's the effect of the splitter that you're looking for on the mound. Really nice pitch right there and had him out front over the top. I'm sure the batter was thinking he was getting something else, perhaps a fastball with a little more straight and velo to it. Now, here is Patrick Mazika. He was a strikeout victim his first time. The pitch. That's in there. 0 and 1. Next offering is in for a strike. They say it went. Gets it to first. He's out. Here's the catcher for the Mets, Patrick Mazika. Now batting. 
and a pitch. Liner caught it second. Go ahead, run on base. Digging in, it's the speedy outfielder, Chaz McCormick. We talk about guys with good speed, and definitely he has it. But pushing the offense aside for just a second, Chris, it's the defensive side that I think the speed factors in the most. Yamamoto back to work. And first offering is fouled off. Just missed. If he's able to connect on that, look out. At the belt and fires. If you're a base runner, you've got to stay dialed in here. Look for anything in the dirt. Try your best to get in the scoring position. The 1-1. One -one. Foul ball with two strikes may see some movement over there at first base trying to stay out of a double play here runner leads away at second and that just misses. Hitter's got some good opposite field power. What I like about something being hit to the right side into the outfield is that the base runner at second has a very good read and can determine whether or not he can score on that base hit. And a swing and a miss. One out. Here's the shortstop at the play. Jeremy Pena. The pitch. And that's through there for a strike. And I know you want to be patient as a hitter, but you got to be ready to jump on the first thing straight. And he got one right there, but left the bat on his shoulder. Next pitch downstairs. And now it's even one and one. Next offering is in for a strike. Next one misses. It's two and two. And down on strikes. And there's two away. Back here in Queens. And now the catcher comes up to him. Patrick Mazika. Look for him to hit behind the runner. Perhaps shoot it to the right side. The pitch. And takes low for ball one. I wonder how much of a distraction those fans behind home plate are to the opposing pitcher. I mean, they are into it. They're trying to will this club back into this ball game. Right-handed reliever. And that one is lifted in the air. Siri makes the play, and there's one down. Well, such a confidence boost for a reliever to come into the ball game and get the first hitter he faces. Just makes everything slow down a little bit, and then from there can really settle in. So the New York Mets got an inauspicious debut from their recently promoted prospect, and Singy, he looked a bit lost at the plate today. Yeah, and I think when you call up a prospect midseason like this, you expect to see some growing pains, but I still got to think they were hoping for a little bit more than what we've seen, but... The good news is he didn't come up to ride the pine, so he's going to have plenty of chances to make an impact for this team. And welcome back. John Chambi alongside Chris Singleton. Thanks for joining us. We're in the seventh with nobody out. 
We've seen a great pitching performance so far in this one. He has not allowed a hit. What's the mindset for him and his teammates right now, Singy? Well, you can bet that pretty much everyone on the bench knows exactly what's going down. And the key is to not let the moment get the best of you. Everybody just needs to do their job. The pitch. Moustakis stands in now and lets that one go for a strike. And he flips a breaking ball in there or a changeup. Either one. <laughs> Something off speed. Good arm action on it, whatever it was. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. So he's gotten deep into this game. And at least so far, not showing a ton of signs of fatigue. Tyler Naquin to the plate. Now the right-hander ready to go. Still no score. That's in there. It's 0-1. We'll see if he can finish the no-no, but he's already done enough to really boost this team going forward. That one hooked foul. The Reds yet to pick up a hit here. And he grounds one back up the middle. Fires over to first. Two up, two down. Well, he's doing a nice job of keeping the ball out of the air. Let's the defense work behind him with another ground ball. Good execution. Next is the designated hitter, Colin Moran. And a pitch. Swing and a miss. And that's strike one. You know, he's been so great today. Really just throwing whatever the catcher puts down. I mean, hasn't shaken off the catcher very much at all today. The next pitch misses, and that's ball one. The Reds hitless so far in the game. The next Whoa. offering misses. Two and two. Strikeouts have been a big part of the success in not allowing a hit. In there, base hit. And the bid for history is gone. Around first and hustling for second. Save. Oh, just a nice job coming through in a pretty high leverage spot right there. He got a pitch he could get to out front, kept his bat through the ball, and didn't pull off or roll his hands over. And that allowed him to rip that ball down the line. And there's the third out. That'll do it for the inning. So one left for Cincinnati. And we're still knotted at Bottom of the eighth. And the batter will be the shortstop, Kyle Farmer. The Reds in striking distance, but have some work to do. Boog, it starts with the laid off man. Need a good at bat out of him right here. So impressive how the velo is still there, even this deep into the outing. Next offering is down low. And one and two. Next pitch inside. Two balls, two strikes. Got him. Down on strikes, and he knew it. Well, they've had a great plan of attack for him tonight. I mean, finding all the holes in his swing and his approach, just frustrating for him up there. You strike out a guy three times in a game, I think that guy's got to go back and really study some video with his hitting coach, figure out how they're beating him, make this adjustment really quick, because word will get around the league in a hurry. Nap watches that one for a strike, standing in here with one down. Next offering is in for a strike. Well, who would have thought Jacob deGrom as a college shortstop and then a ninth-round pick by the Mets was going to turn into this good of a pitcher back-to-back -back Cy Young's in both 2018 and 2019 here's Tommy Pham the wind of the pitch yeah Boog, just incredible you look at that benchmark of 200 innings comfortably over that in 2018 with 217 and the sub 2 ERA just impressive at 1.70 to lead the league Next pitch is in the dirt, and that's ball one. Mm -hmm. 
Swings through that one. It's a strikeout. The big righty strikes out the side. Nobody left for Cincinnati. They're on the short end of a 4-0 score. Back here at Great American Ballpark, bottom nine. Now the number two hitter, Shogo Akiyama. On the inside corner for a strike. The wind and the pitch. Popped in the air. Left field. Hauls it in for the out. The first so up next, Joey Votto. A strikeout and a walk. The wind and the pitch. And a good eye there. Next offering upstairs. 2-0 count to a guy with this much pop at the dish. You better expect him to be turning on something. It's going to either get hit hard to the pull side or the fans better look out in the stands. Oh, that got him on the mound. Not in time, and he reaches safely. Here's Mike Moustakis to hit. DeGrom back to work. That pitch in for a strike. That's strike one. Votto, the runner at first with one gone in the inning. Next offering is in for a strike. Love how vocal the umpire is today. No doubt in the hitter's mind, catcher's mind, and even the pitcher's mind as to the conviction in the call. Now this one's high and deep. Way back there. On its way. Gone. got in the jet stream on a line drive. You saw the numbers on the backs of the jerseys of the outfielders, which is usually bad news, and all of a sudden, they're back in this ballgame. And here comes the Mets manager to the mound. Pitching change coming. That'll be it for Jacob DeGrom. Two-run ball game as he heads for the dugout and will be back with a new pitcher. So they turn to Edwin Diaz out of the pen, and he'll feature a hard slider to work off his fastball. Well, we nearly saw history today, Singy, but he couldn't finish off the no-hitter. Still, they got the win. Yeah, and that's ultimately the more important thing. I mean, most of the game, he was absolutely dominating out there on the mound, really getting the dugout fired up, and I think it'll carry over for him in the next several games. Just really a terrific performance he gave us today. from a place that has quite the reputation, Ship It Stadium. Triple-A action coming at you on the show. It's the Syracuse Mets taking on the Buffalo Bisons. Along with Chris Singleton, I'm John Chompy. Minor League Baseball on MLB The Show for you in this one. And see, here's a young prospect that the front office has their eye on. In fact, they've got some scouts in town to see if he might be able to handle the jump to the majors soon. Yeah, and at the start of the year, I might not have picked him as the guy most likely to get the call to the big leagues, but they've seen something in him that might say he's ready. So if he can have a big... 
day? Who knows? He might be able to hop on in the fast track to get to the show. All right, ready to get underway. And now the shortstop, Ronnie Mauricio. First offering, misses the mark. Next offering is in for a strike. One and one. And now two and one after that missed inside. Next offering is downstairs. Next offering finds the zone and the count is full. Swing and a bouncer. To first, one out in the top of the first. Kellen Deglin now at the plate. Well, the offense really struggled last night. I mean, it was awful. So I, I think picking up a run right here, that's going to get him going a little bit. On the ground, could be two. To second for one. And he'll be safe at first. Ronnie Mauricio now. And he deals. Ground ball left side could be two. Fires to second for one. Double play. And that'll do it for the inning. And now the DH, Cullen Large. His home and away splits there. Bounced out to short. Safe at first as they can't make the play. It doesn't really matter where you are in the lineup. Your job is to get on base and try to start a rally if you're leading off an inning. So an infield single does the job right there. Now we'll see if they can make something happen. The pitch. On the ground is short. Could be two. Off balance feed. There's one. Over to first. Double play. The batter. Not short stop. So the lineup flips over. Ronnie Mauricio will hit next. Now the shortstop. Ronnie Mauricio. Allgaier back to work. And there's a hit. Throw in holds the lead runner at second. Two on now with two yeah, away. The third base Brett Beatty digs in now. Two outs, couple of base runners at first and second. And there's ball four. If he can get through this one, put up a zero, this will help in his outings to come. And now the right fielder, Travis Jankowski, one for two. Rolled slowly to first. Takes it himself, and that is that. So they load the bases, but leave them stranded. Back here at the ballpark, digging in, Ronnie Mauricio. Leading off for the men, the shortstop. And a pitch. That's off the mark, and it's 1-0. Oh. Next offering is in for a strike. One and one. And there's a strike. And now the lefty. Well, he might have to look for a different put away pitch right here, too, too. He's already seen the curveball a couple of times in this at bat, so might have it timed up and ready for it. Flares it into the outfield, and it's in there. Base hit. Find the ball. Find the ball.
Here's the third baseman, Brett Beatty. Hit on the ground, might be two. And that chance handled on the run, sends it over to first. That's the first out, the top of the seventh. Good late bite on that slider, got the hitter out in front, rolled over on it, exactly what he was supposed to do. Now it's the right fielder, Travis Jankowski, one for three. Soft contact in the air. No trouble here. Puts it away for the out. And yeah, there's two away. So now the DH spot. Carlos Rincon. Next pitch has popped up. And that's the third out. We go to the ninth. Now it's the shortstop, Ronnie Mauricio. The shortstop, Ronnie Mauricio. The why to kick the pitch. That's in there. Strike one. Well, that's really the money spot. Down and away. If you can locate that consistently, it's going to be real tough for guys to square that up. That's what you love to see relievers do coming out of that bullpen. Next offering is in for a strike. Two pretty nasty sliders to get this hitter in an 0-2 count. If you're up there at the plate, you got to look up in the zone and spit on anything that's down. And a base hit. Clearly seeing the ball very well in this one. That's a good sound coming off the bat, man. And as he connected out front and ripped it into the outfield, that's one of those swings where you just don't even feel the ball hit the barrel. And that's a pure stroke. So digging in, Brett Beatty. Crowd locked in right now. One run game here in the ninth. Here we go. Need you right here. To first, maybe a two ball. To second, there's one. Over to first, safe. No, well, he didn't recognize changeup earlier enough. Got out in front a little bit, rolled over on it, and beat it into the. Here's the second baseman, Goske Kato. Now back, second baseman, Goske. Roll to short, could be two. To second, there's one. The double play ends it right here. Well, he wanted to impress the front office and push for a call-up, and he had multiple hits in this one. That's got to help. Yeah, it's a great showing at the dish, and I know personally I tried to show my best stuff anytime the front office sent down some people to take a look at me or any of my teammates. So I know he's got to be feeling pretty good right now. Back here at Wrigley Field, and we welcome you in already two away here in the seventh. John Chambi with Chris Singleton. The Mets are out to a healthy lead the division looking really good. Singing with the trade deadline coming up, do you think they're set to go as is, or do you think they need to add some more firepower? Well, I think the way that the game operates in this day and age, Boog, I mean, teams make it big additions at the deadline, and you just see it can be a flurry of moves. I'd be surprised if they just stayed with the roster they have. I think they could have a big deal in the works. Thompson back to work. Escobar in the box here. Let's that one go for a ball. Bullpen action for the Cubs. Daniel Norris, the left-hander, up and throwing. Robertson, the right-hander, loosening up as well. 
Next offering is in for a strike. A big trade pickup doesn't guarantee postseason success, of course, but it rarely hurts to at least make your team better on paper. Righty to the plate. That's a strike. One and two. Looking for some insurance. Or as our friends down in the South would say, insurance. No matter how you say it, we know what you mean. You see how the catcher wanted that pitch up and in. Want to try to tie him up. That's the one thing we're seeing, that high fastball. You have to get it up there because of how hitters have changed their swings. Two outs. Bases are full. Pitcher having a pretty tough time getting that swing and miss. Third foul ball in a row. Next pitch misses. Now two and two. Kicks and deals. And a foul ball. He stays alive. Now he's desperately looking for that swing and miss. He's going to have to just change speeds a little bit, try to move it around, create just a little bit of illusion at the end. Fouled off. He was late. Five foul balls in this at bat so far, and these guys are going head to head. You can see the crowd. They're starting to get into it a little bit more, even though there hasn't been a ball in play yet. And that eats him up. No throw here. First and third now with two out. He's in there. A perfect example right there. That plate discipline, it pays off. The deeper he gets into a count, the more comfortable he becomes, and he usually wins the battle. Manuel Rodriguez on a pitch out of the pen here. He last pitched four days ago, so he should feel pretty fresh. Now it's Dominic Smith. The pitch. And first offering is fouled off. Late swing, foul to the left. Two outs. Not the easiest nope. thing when you're talking about a guy that's, you know, perhaps is going to be in the rotation, you know, maybe a long relief guy, to not start an inning, to come into an inning with pressure on it and, and try to get yourself comfortable. Canna on third. Escobar at first. Two out of the inning. In the air, right side. Brings it in with a nice running grab. And the inning is over. Midway in inning number seven, and it's time to stretch. It's the Mets four and the Cubs nothing. Bottom of the seventh. So up now for Chicago. Michael Hermosillo. The Cubs in striking distance, but have some work to do. Boog, it starts with the leadoff man. Need a good at bat out of him right here. Here comes a pitch. Swing and a miss, and that's strike two. Bounce to third. Escobar collects. Toss to Alonzo, and they get the leadoff hitter in the seventh. Well, he's doing a nice job of keeping the ball out of the air. Lets the defense work behind him with another ground ball. Good execution. And now Frank Schwindel. What a season it's been for him. He has supplied a lot of power and that average. Well, it's been a very impressive outing so far. His command has been a big part of it. Even when he misses, he misses outside the strike zone, which is exactly what a pitcher wants. One down, base is empty. Swing, and this one's bounced to the ground. McCann to first, and a couple of quick outs. And up next for Chicago, Patrick Wisdom. And a pitch. That's in there. Now this manager knows that his players are just trying to do too much. Everybody needs to just take a deep breath, relax, and let it naturally happen. 
Next offering is in for a strike. This guy's pounding the zone. Hitters don't have time to think in between pitches. And a swing and a miss. And that's that. And the Cubs are down in order. They trail it here for nothing. Back here at the friendly confines. Now it's the second baseman, Luis Guillorme. The second baseman, Luis Guillorme. And the pitch. And that one just misses a ball and no strikes. Next offering misses. Now 2-0. And he walked him. Nope. That could be a tone setter for the inning. Four straight pitches and leadoff batters on base. We'll see if the next guy waits until there's a called strike before he takes the bat off the shoulder. Yeah, the right hander back to work. McCann takes a strike there as he stands at the plate now. Right hander kicks deals. That's off the mark, and it's one and one. One one to McCann. On the ground to third. Oh, great stop. There's one. And two. In time to first for the double play. Back to the top of the lineup. Here's Brandon Nimmo. He's someone that you might not describe as having elite level speed, but he can absolutely move, and it is a factor in his game. Base hit into right field. Two out base hit keeps the inning alive. Went up there looking to be aggressive and got something he could handle. Solid swing from start to end. On time with everything. Really good balance. Nice extension. And he met it out front for the line drive knock. Man at first. Here's Starling Marte. And here it comes. And the first pitch misses for ball one. Righty delivers. That's a strike, and it's one and one. Good speed on the base pass. He handles the bat very well. I wouldn't be surprised if the skipper puts on some type of hit and run or a run and hit. Nimmo leads off first with two down to the inning. Rodriguez keeping an eye on him. At the belt and fire. Run around the goal. The other way. Base hit. Well, they call that an advantage count for a reason. You're so much more likely to get something you can handle. Pretty much a model swing on that one as he ripped it into the opposite field gap. And I'm sure he's going to be watching that one back on video because that's the kind of swing you want to bottle. So many positives that led to that knock. First and third, two away. Francisco Lindor up now for the Mets. Hermosillo makes the catch, and that'll do it. Two left for the Mets, but they're in front for nothing. Ready for the bottom of the eighth, and now Ian Hatt. Leading off the pitch. The left fielder. And a good fastball to start him off at strike one. Ripped on the ground a second. Guillaume made a first. Leadoff man is out here in the eighth. Rafael Ortega stands in. The pitch. And a swing and a line drive at a right field. Marte makes the catch. And there are two outs. The catcher, number 40. Wilson. Wilson Contreras getting ready to hit. This guy has turned into one of the best catchers in the game, but was originally signed by the Cubs as an infielder. First offering, and it just misses. 
to third. Escobar with the throw to first. And Contreras is retired. And that is the inning. Cubs down quietly. They're down 4 nothing. Top of the night, and stepping in for New York, Pete Alonso. He's not going to get cheated up there. No, he's not. He's looking to do damage with every swing he takes. Swing and a miss. That's strike one. For this guy, it's truly a battle when he steps into the box. Only one thing on his mind, seeing that pitch out of the hand and hit it hard somewhere. Next offering is in for a strike. That hits the dirt. One and two to count. One and two here. Oh, this is deep to left center. Way back there. On its way. Gone. Pete Alonso takes it deep. His 32nd of the year. And they tack one on the board. It's five zip. High fastballs, especially with good velocity, can be really hard to catch up to. But he stays tall, his top hand works extremely well, and he absolutely clobbered it. Here's Mark Hanna. Up next to the net. The left Rodriguez Mark back to work. Hanna. That's the third. Fires over to Schwindel, and that's the first out. Nice recovery after giving up the homer. Eduardo Escobar, El Caballo up to him. And a pitch. Up the middle. There to beat him by an eyelash. Man, Chris, a jump throw like that is certainly worthy of the snack cast treatment. Let's see what the numbers have to say about it. Yeah, these are some favorable numbers, Boog. This is the type of play that showcases his arm strength. I mean, he made it look easy, but I promise you, that's not a throw every shortstop can make, especially with that much behind it. Dominic Smith up now for the Mets. Rocketed out towards right center. He dives, but can't hang on. That's a base hit. Well, clearly he was ready to hit right there. A lot of hitters tell themselves, oh, line drive over the infielder's head. That's, That's what I'm trying to do. Just keep that mm -hmm. approach simple. And right there, it was perfectly executed. On time with everything and pulled it into the gap nicely. Here's Luis Guillorme. And he deals. And there's the strike. Kicks and fires. And now the count is even. Smith, the runner at first with two gone. Schwindel takes it to the bag. That's the third out. The Mets add one to their lead on this solo shot. And the lead is now 5 nothing. And all my haters, y'all can feel you softly because you like the gas tank. Don't miss the softies in the wind and ain't feeling you. See, every time you see me, I got something new. All set for the bottom of the ninth. And here's the DH for the Cubs. Clint Frazier. The designated hitter. The wine of the pitch. Frazier. Well, they've kept him pretty quiet in this series. Still doesn't have a knock. I know you want to get that first knock out of the way. Maybe more will come. But you got to give some credit to the pitching staff. They've had a great plan against him. And the right hater deals. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. And there's one down. Really love the pitch sequence right there. I'm telling you what, pitcher and catcher are on the same page right now. Not shortstop. Andrew Yeah, we pulling up, kicking the front though. Say you about that action, we know that's a front though. Now it's Andrelton Simmons. The right hander back to work. Popped up. Giorme makes the grab. And there's two down. Now Here's Nick Madrigal. He's kind of an outlier, especially when guys are consciously sacrificing contact to deliver power. Right side, hard hit. 
On to first, ball game. And the Mets get a shutout on the mound. They pad their division lead with yet another win. Singy, coming up on the trade deadline, they look really solid. Yeah, they do. And that means they've got a lot of decisions to make. I mean, there's plenty of talent on this roster already, but you never know. And, and maybe they make a move and try to get that last piece to complete that championship puzzle. Back here at City Field, John Chambi alongside Chris Singleton. Thanks for joining us. We're in the seventh with nobody out. We've seen a great pitching performance so far in this one. He has not allowed a hit. What's the mindset for him and his teammates right now, Singy? Well, you can bet that pretty much everyone on the bench knows exactly what's going down. And the key is to not let the moment get the best of you. Everybody just needs to do their job. Welcome back. Top of inning number seven. And stepping in for the Yankees, Anthony Rizzo. First pitch, and he just misses. We'll see if he can finish the no-no, but he's already done enough to really boost this team going forward. Next offering is fouled back. The tying run at the plate. He swings and fouls one off. Next pitch is downstairs. That's a really good take. In there, base hit. And the bid for history is gone. Canna whips it back in. And they hold the lead runner at second. Potential tying run now in scoring position. Well, that may end up being an at-bat we go back to later on when this game is over. Just a blue pit behind third right there, and that's a really tough play for a third baseman or shortstop to get to, and the same for the left fielder. So he just found a perfect place to drop that one in right there. Now we'll see if they can pick up that tying run and start us over here in the late innings. It's Aaron Judge now. Gets the call, and it's 0-1. With a single base runner, because of all the power, they are dangerous to tie this thing up or take the lead. Next offering is in for a strike. Well, don't expect too many more high fastballs. This is a good sinker ball pitcher, and sometimes they can make mistakes trying to pitch up in the zone. Look for him to stay down around the knees to be effective. Next one just misses. And the count's full. Well, here's a good opportunity in this inning to get on the scoreboard after that leadoff hit. And hard to order. Ah, and this ball gets down. It's a hit. Around third. To the plate. Safe. And we are tied. 
We're tied at one. Rowley comes through clutch with the RBI single. That was big. Didn't try to do too much with it. Just a really controlled, simple swing. We don't see a whole lot of that these days with guys trying to launch and hit home runs. But sometimes you got to shorten up just like that. Now a huge at bat in this game coming up. Joey Gallo steps to the plate. Pitches in there. Strike one. with two strikes may see some movement over there at first base try to stay out of a double play here next offering is fouled back just missed if he's able to connect on that look out hey we got nobody and a swing and a miss one gone here been a pretty rough start to this series for him at the plate. Three strikeouts in the first game yesterday. Another one right there. They've really got a great plan for how to deal with this guy right now. And here is Giancarlo Stanton. He's 0 for 1. And a pitch. And it's fouled away. If you're a base runner, you've got to stay dialed in here. Look for anything in the dirt. Try your best to get into scoring position. One away, tie game. Go ahead, run, stands at first. Three. The punch out there, back to back strikeouts. Well, just excellent location on that inside fastball, really locked him up. And it's a hitter, it's not typically what you're looking for. You're trying to protect away and then in, so you can be a little bit tardy with two strikes. Hard to tell if he was fooled or if he thought it would be called a ball, but either way, that's a really yeah. nice pitch. Now it's Josh Donaldson's turn to hit. There's a strike. Well, on the mound, very efficient. Able to produce an outcome, it seems like, within the third or fourth pitch of just about every at-bat. Base hit. That was smoked through the infield. Now, I'm sure he feels really good about that one. Smash that one through the infield for the knock. When it's hit that hard, it makes it very tough on the infielders to make any sort of play. Now a good opportunity to potentially jump ahead in this game here in the later innings. Here is the young phenom, Glaber Torres. And the pitch. Check swing, but he went too far. Strike one. Yeah, I'm surprised we didn't see a visit from the pitching coach here. Just to remind him, focus on the hitter. Don't worry about anything else. Righty to the plate. This one popped up. Foul ground, first base side. Alonso puts it away, and that'll do it. The tying run comes across, and we're knotted up again. Seventh inning stretch time. All tied, 1-1. All set for the start of the inning. Aaron Hicks at the plate. Stay ahead, stay ahead. The pitch. And a strike. So he's back out to begin the eighth. Been a really nice outing for him so far, Singy. He's thrown the ball really well. Kept hitters off balance, and he's been very efficient with that pitch count. But at this point, even though it's been relatively low, you start keeping an eye on it to make sure that he doesn't have any fatigue and injuring himself. Isaiah kiner falefa up to the plate. Here we go right now, fellas. The wind and the pitch. Edge of the zone for a strike. 0-1. This game has been so tight. Feels like the next team to score will win it. That's the third. Escobar handles the chance. Fires to first on the run. And a couple of quick outs. Here's the Yankees catcher now. Ben Workvet. And Chris, his big strength is defense. But it is interesting. In today's world of baseball, compared to when you played, a good defensive catcher is considered differently. Whatever you get offensively is a bonus, but he's got to put the fingers down. He's got to present pitches to the umpire. They're going to help his pitcher get more strikes. That one pulled foul. I think the other component is putting down the finger that the pitcher wants to throw and being on the same page, and that's something that this guy does really well, gets in sync with his pitchers. One and two now. Swing and a miss. And that is that. 
One, two, three, go the Yankees. Score remains tied, 1-1. One, one. Righty reliever out of the pen, Seth Lugo. And he has some nasty breaking stuff. Lugo. Well, we nearly saw history today, Singy, but he couldn't finish off the no-hitter. Still, they got the win. Yeah, and that's ultimately the more important thing. I mean, most of the game, he was absolutely dominating out there on the mound, really getting the dugout fired up, and I think it'll carry over for him in the next several games. Just really a terrific performance he gave us today. Back here at Lone Depot Park. John Shambi alongside Chris Singleton. Thanks for joining us. We're in the seventh with nobody out. We've seen a great pitching performance so far in this one. He has not allowed a hit. What's the mindset for him and his teammates right now, Singy? Well, you can bet that pretty much everyone on the bench knows exactly what's going down. And the key is to not let the moment get the best of you. Everybody just needs to do their job. The pitch. Solaire in the box for the third time today as he takes that one off the plate. Started after it, tried to hold up. Now a look to first, no swing. Gary Simmons with the call. Next one is off the plate, and that's ball three. We'll see if he can finish the no-no, but he's already done enough to really boost this team going forward. This one lifted in the air, left field. Canna makes the catch, and there's one away. Just pulled off of it a little bit right there, that front Number shoulder 15. coming open instead of staying closed. If he does that, he's going to be able to go up the middle the other way with some authority instead of a fly out to left. The pitch. Anderson oh, up for the man. third time here. Watches that one miss. Puts it in the air out towards left center. Nimmo on the move as he glides back. Makes the grab. Nice play after the long run. Two down. Everyday during batting practice, these outfielders get about 10 minutes of balls in the gaps. They practice this, and when the game comes, they make the play perfectly. Yeah. Cooper lets that one go for a strike. Third trip to the plate for him here. That's out to center field. Makes the grab on the run. And that is the third out of the inning. And one, two, three, go the Marlins. They still find themselves down. Six zip. Back here in Miami, bottom of the inning, Jacob Stallings now. He is at the top of the game in terms of defense at the catching spot. Not what he's looking for there in the OO count. Looks like he wants the ball down in the zone. In there, base hit. And the bid for history is gone. Takes the turn. He's digging for second. And it's a double. Their first hit in this one. Nice line drive to the full side. Met it out front, but just stayed through it nice enough and ripped it into the outfield. Jazz Chisholm now. McGill back to work. Stallings leads off second with nobody out. Next offering is fouled back. Left hand hitter waits. Got him looking. Not what you're looking for after the leadoff double. A strikeout, and there's one away. Miguel Rojas at the plate. Singh, you talk about a guy that has all the skills. The range is really good, but the arm just stands out, and he makes all the plays. Yeah, 
And because of that big power arm, he's able to play a little bit deeper, make throws from the outfield grass all the way across the diamond, and still get a pretty good runner. That's impressive. Kicks and deals. That one fouled off. And a one-two. Ground ball right side. That's a hit. Stop sign goes up at third. Runners at the corners with one out. Well, that certainly feels good when you can win the at bat after being down in the count, up against it with two strikes right there. To me, it's just a really controlled, balanced swing. He wasn't trying to do too much with it. Just stayed disciplined, got the barrel to the ball, and put it in play. John Birdie at the plate. And that's in there for strike one. Well, he's just about to throw his 100th pitch. Man, he's got a chance to get through this eighth inning if he can get two more quick outs. And here it comes. Swing, and he breaks his bat. And that's a foul ball. You see how the catcher wanted that pitch up and in. Wanted to try to tie him up. That's the one thing we're seeing, that high fastball. You have to get it up there because of how hitters have changed their swings. On the ground, two ball. Over to McNeil. Over to first, but he beats it. I promise you, they're guys that get a little bit faster when they can smell an RBI. That was a possible inning, ending double play. Great hustle, and he gets rewarded with the RBI because of it. Delino DeShields Jr. up to hit. Here comes a pitch. That one down the line. That's a fair ball, and it's getting into the corner. This looks like extra bases around third. He scores, it's 6-2. A little more backspin on that instead of the top spin. And he's jogging around the bases rather than pulling up at second. And now it's Jesus Aguilar for the fourth time tonight. On the ground to third. Lays out, but he can't squeeze it. And he beats it. He's safe. Two consecutive base hits for these guys here. And you can feel this crowd waking up a bit here as the guys are starting to make some noise with their bats. Two gone with runners at the corners. Now the left fielder, Jorge Soler. There's a swing and a drive. That's back there. Turning, looking, and that one is gone. Jorge Soler goes deep. His 23rd of the year, and they cut into the lead. It's 6-5. on the big part of the yard for that home run and just barely got it over the wall. I thought for a second he brought it back out there too. Gave it a great effort, but you know, those plays are so tough to pull off. And I'm sure he'd love to have another shot at it. Here comes the manager out of the dugout and he'll make a move for the bullpen. Tyler McGill departs and he leaves in a one-run game. New pitcher coming up. We'll be back in a minute. Trevor May gets handed the rock out of the pen. Hasn't pitched in a while. He's had the last five days off. 65. Trevor May. Well, we nearly saw history today, Singy, but he couldn't finish off the no-hitter. Still, they got the win. Yeah, and that's ultimately the more important thing. I mean, most of the game, he was absolutely dominating out there on the mound, really getting the dugout fired up, and I think it'll carry over for him in the next several games. Just really a terrific performance he gave us today.